Spiritual perspective is a time that we're going to break into the pages of God's Word and we're going to gain knowledge and understanding and strength and blessings. Hi everyone, welcome to Spiritual Perspective. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Lynchburg, the city of Seven Hills. And I pray you're going to be blessed on the program today as we're dealing with win your battles. You got battles going on, you got problems you're facing, you need answers, you need solutions, you need help, stay tuned. I've got something great to bring you today that's going to encourage your heart and give you a really good spiritual perspective. And I'm going to be uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 12 using two verses 10 and 11. And again, I want to welcome you today to Spiritual Perspective, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm going to tell you more about some upcoming worship opportunities and blessings and things that's going on here at Gethsemane. I'll hold those to the end of the program, so stay with me. I want you to hear these things because they're very important and they will be a great blessing to your heart. And I don't want you to miss any blessing that God has for you. Well, we're talking today about winning your battles. We've certainly been inundated with a lot of battles over the last uh, year plus. We've seen a lot of issues from COVID to pandemics to problems and jobs and situations. And, you know, before people couldn't work, now they won't go to work. It's just been insane, really, hasn't it? And uh, we've just faced a lot of things, and we're probably going to face some more things yet to come. Not being negative, just being honest with you, because we're living in a, well, the Word of God tells us it's a perilous time. It's a troublesome time. It's a time that each day that we arise and face that day, we don't know what that day may hold, but we can have assurance that we know who holds that day and what our God can do. So we look into the pages of God's Word in Revelation 12, 10 and 11. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Thank God he's cast down. Isn't that encouraging today? Which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. May God bless the reading of his word. The question's been asked, uh, so when will the enemy leave us alone? And someone said, the day we arrive in heaven because there we are out of his reach. Well, as long as we're in this earth and this flesh and facing what we're facing, we're going to have, we're going to face the devil and we're going to have a time with him as far as trying to oppress, defeat, discourage us and all the other things that he tries to do. But I also remind myself every day that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Also, as, also as Isaiah the prophet said, that no weapon that is formed against you can prosper. God's with you for you and he'll see you through whatever you're facing. And you know, these issues that we're facing today are certainly true that we are in a position today that people are dying every day and people are facing death. There's crazy things going on and people gunning people down and wars and rumors of wars and all kinds of things. But one day there's going to be a great, a great, a great gathering, I'll get it out, a great gathering of God's people. And in that day, goodbye devil, goodbye world, goodbye problems, pain, accusations, and everything else that goes with it. We're going to be in the presence of Almighty God. The believer will be released from the influence of the hands of the adversity of Satan, our adversary, and we will no longer have to put up with his schemes, his temptations, his trials, and his deliberate intent to try to destroy our walk with God. But there's another powerful truth here that we need to grasp, understand today. There's on, there is one day on earth when neither the enemy nor his cohorts will be able to touch your life. You can say amen to that. What a great day that'll be. You say, preacher, I wish it was right now. I do too, but it's not. And until that day, we just have to do something. We have to continue to remain uh, in a position of being steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Additionally, we have got to be running with patience the race that is set before us and not become weary in the well-doing and 
not give up and not lay down and not get discouraged. I know it's very easy to get that way with all the things that are happening. And I know dealing with people as I do as a pastor every day, that there are a lot of things. I tell you, the last year, the year of uh, what, four or five months has been certainly trying. I know as a pastor, I've, I've seen a lot of things happen, but let me tell you what, these last months and this last year has been beyond all of that. But here's the God that we know who's with us. And regardless of whatever Satan throws against you today, it's not too big that our God can't handle it. So from a New Testament perspective, when you really hear the gospel of the kingdom of God, and you understand that redemptive covenant that's available to you, then what happens is the day you make up your mind and enter into that covenant, enter into that promise, enter into that salvation by confessing Christ as your personal Savior, thank God in turning from your sins and giving your life to Christ, there's no power of darkness that today can prevent God's power from reaching you, and you remember that. And even after salvation, I know a lot of times Christians get discouraged after salvation because it seems like Satan just un unfurls his fury upon people and tries to discourage them. I see, I, like I said, I've been doing uh, pastoral work for quite a few years, and I've dealt with a lot of things and a lot of people, and I've never seen it as it is today, the oppression that Satan is trying to tie on people and the defeat and the discouragement, the sickness, the pain, the problems. I mean, where do you start and where do you finish? But I do know this that through every one of those things that God is an able God who will bring us through. We cannot stop believing. We cannot stop living by faith. We cannot give up on the Lord. And even though we go through these things, hallelujah, one day it'll all be over and we'll be in the mighty presence of a mighty God and thank the Lord the devil will not be there and we will be in God's glorious presence rejoicing and praising God while the devil is burning in the lake of fire. Won't that be an amazing day? No, we're not there yet. But we're headed there. And as we see these events, don't let them discourage you that's happening in the world. All the political stuff, all the worldwide stuff, pandemics, buildings fall. I mean, everything that's going on, it's very alarming today. But we've got to remember there is a God who sits in heaven who is sovereign, meaning he is in control. So there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Power to lift you up out of the mire of sin that you're in. Power to change your life. Power to bless you. Power to heal you. Power to bring your family back together. Power to change things. That's power in the blood of Jesus. And you need to start proclaiming the power that that blood has. Stop sitting down and looking at everything around you and getting all discouraged and defeated. And all you want to do is go through a box of Kleenex every day. That's not your solution. Get up and give your God glory, honor, and praise. And let me tell you what gets God's attention. When his people today will give him glory, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what's before you, behind you, beside you, you still give glory to God because your faith is anchored on the rock of ages. You know there's a God. Even when we're overwhelmed, David said, I go to the rock that is higher than I. And that's our God. Amen. You know, generations later, we find that uh, first we see Satan saw our God cut the skins of two animals in Genesis 3 and cover Adam and Eve because they had sinned and God made a covering, made a provision for them. Then as generations continue to go by and pass, um, we see that he witnessed an amazing event when the blood of the lamb was placed on the outpost uh, of the door of the Hebrews' homes. And when the death angel came by, it passed over that home, and the death angel was not permitted to enter. So in the wilderness, then we find that Satan is observing the establishment of an elaborate system, a ritualistic offering, a blood sacrifice demanded by God for sin and transgression. The tabernacle and what God would do there, and the mercy seat, and the blood was applied. Thank God! You know, all that is fantastic. Then the final blow when Christ that when Christ came, condescended, he came down from glory, stepped down from the beauty, the splendor, the amazement of heaven, came down to this sinful, dirty, filthy, sin-infested world. And there he lived for 33 and a half years and went to a cross and died and was hung up for our hang-ups and paid the price that we couldn't pay. But thank God he paid it in full. 
And thank God he made a way for us. And I'm glad today that Christ's blood has given total authority to overcome the power of the enemy. The enemy is Satan today. Stop letting him beat you up. You say, preacher, he's just riding me to death. Take off the saddle and, stop re and start rebuking him. You know the way to rebuke him, James talked about it. He said, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Let me say that again. Submit yourself to God. Holy, totally, absolutely. Just not once a month, just not once a year, not just occasionally. Submit yourself to God daily. And then you're on the bloodline, power line of the blood of Jesus where you can resist the devil and he'll have to flee. You know, no is in the vocabulary of a Christian. You can say no to the devil and he has to flee. So today, if your confession today of the power of the blood of Jesus, it's one that the enemy cannot fight against. And when you start naming that name, Jesus, hallelujah, what a name. When you start declaring him and praising him, when you start claiming his blood and holding that blood-stained banner up against Satan, when you start declaring the names of God, that he is Jehovah Shalom, the God who is our peace, that he is indeed today Jehovah Nissi, he's Jehovah Shama, he's Jehovah God, he's Jehovah Thank God, Jireh, that supplies our every need. Jehovah Sinkanu, who is our righteousness. When you start declaring his name, and see, we're not doing that. And that's why the devil is slapping us around and, and absolutely, absolutely having, wreaking havoc in our lives, our homes, and our families, and our churches. We need to start getting back. We need to get unified in the blood of Jesus as a church. And folks, we as Christians are on the same side. We're not here competing against each other. We're here today to serve the Lord together. So it's important today that nothing can prevent the, the redemptive covering of the blood of Jesus that's given us eternal life. Satan can't take your salvation. I don't care what these denominations say. They can't do it. And don't even, don't even try to argue with me on that. Because I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Not being arrogant. I'm just telling you today, I'm sealed unto the day of redemption. I hope you are too. I know who I know who has saved me. I know my name is written in heaven. I know the enemy is defeated. I know Jesus is Lord, and I know one day he's coming for me, and I know one day I shall see him face to face. So I'm encouraged, and I'm blessed, and I'm strengthened through all of that. So the bottom line is today, thank God for the redemptive blood of Jesus. A believer must walk in faith, and we must also walk in the knowledge of our God to maintain a life of victory. Victory is not something that just flies by once in a blue moon. Victory is for you every day. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, he bought me with his redeeming blood. And he's done all of that. And thank God today, you can know today, indeed, what the word says. And you know what that says to Satan? That means then you're more than a conqueror through him that loved you. That means today that you're serving the one true living God that's who already defeated the devil. Thank you, Jesus. We're not trying to get victory. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting today the good fight of faith from the cross that's already won the victory. So that means today that you can resist him. And today you don't have to be lured into temptation. You don't have to be manipulated. Well, preacher, how about my children? They just, uh, they're just they doing things, and this governor has legalized marijuana, and what am I going to do? Pray. Pray to the God who is a God of deliverance today. Put an example of your living before your children, uh, before your neighbors. Let people know you're not ashamed that you're a child of God. Don't compromise the gospel. Live for Jesus and bless his holy name. You know, Satan and demons, you know, I had someone ask me one time, say, well, can a Christian be possessed by Satan and demons? I can tell you that in one word, two letters. No, you cannot. You can be oppressed by, but they cannot re-enter you. Because what? Go back to what I shared with you a moment ago. Greater is he that is within you, that's Jesus, than he that is within the world, Satan. And so I want you to know this has been a controversial question. Can Satan or demons possess a Christian? Absolutely, emphatically, he, they cannot. And I think in order to really get a better answer for this, 
you've got to define what is a true Christian today. That's not one that just constantly won't hit a lick of the snake for Jesus. All you want to do is lay around the house and eat wise potato chips and drink Pepsi Cola. And that's about the extent of your Christianity. The word Christian should be used as an identifier today and a, as, a, as an identifier for a true disciple that has given their heart and their life to Christ. Now let me tell you something. You've got to start taking your Christianity title seriously and you've got to live up to it. Today, it's just not wearing a tag or putting a cross on your lapel or putting a cross around your neck or set Jesus first or whatever. All that's well and good in its place. But let me tell you what, that's not what makes you a Christian. You can adorn yourself with every piece of jewelry and pins and you name it. That doesn't make you a Christian. I can go sit in my garage, but it doesn't make me a, a car, does it? I don't even have a garage. So, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that doesn't make me a Christian. Being a Christian comes by relationship, not by what the church has said, by what Jesus has said. And today you can be a Christian if you don't know him as your personal savior. A Christian is one who has received the redemptive covenant of the Lord and, let me ask, add something else here, and the instruction of God's word. See, we want to be saved, but you just want that's it so you can get your ticket punch to go to heaven. There's more to it than that. It's more than just having your ticket punched. I hear people use that term. I don't like it. I don't need a ticket punched. I, why do I need a ticket punch when my name is written in the Lamb's book of life? In redemption. And he's taken up his abode in me. The Spirit of God is a part of me. I, I don't need a ticket punched. Man, I got the real Jesus. But I also want you, want you to understand you need the instruction of God's Word. Young guy got saved last Sunday. This Sunday, he's coming back to church. You know what I bought him? I went out. I bought him a beautiful Bible. And inside that Bible, I'm going to put him some instructions about where to read, how to do, what to do, how to pray, all these things, and just give him some instruction about his life and where do you start. That's what happens. We get people saved. We just push them off the cliff and don't give them a parachute. And they never go anywhere with God. We need to equip them, don't we? We give them a Bible. We tell them what to read. We tell them what to do. We instruct them. We disciple them, and we help them. That develops their Christianity today. So we've, we've got to identify as a true, born-again, redeemed, blood-washed, blood-cleansed, blood-belonging child of God. And today, now we are part of the vine because we now are attached and have come into the family of God by our relationship with Jesus Christ. We now have been grafted into the family of God. So, you know, when you, when you look at, you can no longer be possessed by the devil. But there is oppression. Oppression, you know, a person is not possessed as a Christian. They are oppressed. That's just like... The devil is standing on the outside of your life shouting temptation, shouting difficulty, shouting depression to you, shouting anxiety, shouting things to worry about, but that's all he can do. Well, there again, how do you rebuke the devil? Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So you've got to get these issues resolved in your life. What's the greatest weapon Satan uses against a believer? What do you think it is? It's, a we it's the weapon of condemnation. He likes to condemn you. Now, after salvation, does a Christian sin? Sure. We all do. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's, that's a fact. Because you're still living in a flesh nature. You still have a flesh mind. And so therefore today, if you're not careful, if you don't submit yourself to God, it's hard then to resist the devil, isn't it? But you can. The Holy Spirit then reproves the, the, the world of sin, and today he can make a big difference in your life. The word reprove is a word for convict or convince a person about the power of God and what he can do. And you need that power of God in your life today. Conviction for sin is different than condemnation for sin. Understand, conviction is the Spirit of God speaks to you about 
something that you're about to do and convicts you that it's wrong, then the condemnation for sin, understand there is a difference here. Condemnation as a spiritual means is a sense of guilt uh, that follows a person after they've sinned. So you feel that you're condemned. You feel dirty. You feel shameful. You have remorse. And then conviction is that sense of remorse that has been committed that the sins that, you, the, uh, the sins that you're considering committing. So Peter did this when he wept bitterly for the failure that he had when he turned away from Christ. And, you know, we are guilty of that too. Let's not beat Peter up. We're all guilty of it from the standpoint that we deny the Lord, maybe not openly, you know, in our lives, but there are subtle ways that we do that when we could have spoken up and we don't speak up some way that we're living, we should not be living. So you understand today, Jesus today wants to, he wants to set you free and you are in Christ, but you need to start living like a free person. Then there's another question I have for you. Does Satan know the will of God for me or for you? Well, before answering that question, let's establish some facts here. One, he knows what has been written and spoken in God's word because the word of God says that he trembles over the word of God. So God said the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. And this prophecy basically was made. Then the adversary immediately went after the sons of mankind. Also today, he knows the revealed prophetic scriptures about himself. He knows he's sailing a sinking, sinking ship. He knows that he is defeated. But friend, he doesn't want you to think that. Isaiah 14 predicted that Satan would be brought down to the lowest point in the pit. And he shall and he will. You can count on that. But in Revelation 20, John predicted Satan, his final destiny would be the lake of fire. If you're following the devil, you're following today a loser. And he's going to drag you right behind him. You know, when the adversary may not know God's will for your life, He's a master of the strategy to try to distract you from doing that will in your life. And that's his purpose and his plan and his desire. Your entire identity is tied up in the will of God and living it. Are you doing that? Really? Are you living the will of God in your life? Well, preacher, I don't know the will of God. Well, let me tell you why you don't know the will of God. Because you're not reading his word, you're not praying, and you're not in communication with him. Therefore, you don't know the will of God. You can know the will of God. But you're not going to do that on Sunday, laying up in a bed and not getting up, rolling over instead of rolling out. Why don't you this Sunday get up and come to church? I'd love for you to come right here to Gethsemane Baptist Church. I believe you'll be blessed. I don't stand in condemnation. I want, I want God to restore and bless you. I want God to lift you up and encourage you. But are you doing the will of God? Are you being a witness to your family? What kind of witness are we when we don't read God's word, don't spend time with our family? Well, preacher, I take them to the ball game and we go there and we go there and whatever. Well, those things are fine in their place. But you need to be a Christian witness to your children. Some of the things that we used to practice when I was a kid growing up, and I know some people say, well, we're going back to those days. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you they worked. I remember my parents sitting down and reading the Bible. I remember my parents praying. I remember spending time in church as a kid, and that really groomed me, even though I was a rebel and even though I was a, a, a sinner. Still, a seed was planted by God that later on the fruition of that seed would come forth and I would be saved. And you know what? You need to do that with your family and your kids today. God's holding you accountable. Lady, gentlemen, listen. He's holding you accountable for your children. He's holding you accountable for how you're living your life. You think, well, I just can't get over drugs. You know what? You can't get over drugs, alcohol, sex, and all this other filth of the world because you don't want to get over it. It's because you're attached to it. It gives you a little high. It gives you a little satisfaction. It gives you a little pleasure. But what happens when all that's gone? 
What happens when your health all of a sudden, your eyes are sunk back in your head and all of a sudden your health is deteriorating. All of a sudden you feel like your heart's going to come out of your chest. And all of a sudden you lost weight that you can't explain. And all of a sudden body functions are not working properly anymore. And the doctor says, I don't understand what's wrong with the color of your skin. I mean, you've turned a yellow tint or something. See, all these things because you're squandering away the blessings of God. And you're not living in the will of God. Get out of sin and get back into the place that you're supposed to be with the Lord. And if you're sitting there nursing a bottle, stop being a baby sucking on a bottle of booze today and get in the house of God and drink from a fountain that never runs dry. And that indeed is the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, you've been kind of hard on us today. No, I haven't been hard on you. I preach what I preach because I care and love for you, love you and I want you living in the abundant blessings of God. You know, uh, I'll close with John 10, 10. The thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief is Satan, and he's pretty good at what he does. But, Jesus said, but I, Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it, how? More abundantly. Just not getting by. And that's the mentality. Just get by. Survive, man. Just hang on to the rope. That's not the way God intends for, intends for us to live. The abundance of the blessings of God are available. But you've got to get in the word and you've got to get in the will and you've got to get in the work of God for God to do what God wants to do in your life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've enjoyed being with you today. You say, Preacher, you've been wound up tighter than an eight-day clock. Well, maybe so. But the fact of the matter is today, let me tell you what. God loves you, and I care for you and love you too. And I'd love for you to come and worship with us this Sunday. Get up off of that bed. Get out of that house. Put on your clothes and come on to church this Sunday. 411 Blue Ridge Street, one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the, uh, well, as a matter of fact, Blue Ridge Street is right across from a little pizza place called Jojo's Pizza. And we're one block up from the University of Lynchburg. Worship times, 9.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m. We got a lot of great things going on for kids called the Kitty Care Kit for teens, for youngsters. They have church right there in the pew. It's amazing. You say, I've never heard of that. Well, come and see for yourself and let your kids come and see what they do with this. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to want you to come back. Praise the Lord. Please come see us. We'd love for you to be a part of what God's doing in this ministry. I'd also like to encourage you that uh, you check us out on the web at our website, AliveGBC.com. You've seen it come across the screen. Click on it. In the left corner, there are three little bars. Click on that. You can go to that Facebook page. You can go to, uh, excuse me, you can go to our, uh, a number of things, the YouTube account. And just see all the things that are there. You can see duck notes, all kinds of things. What our belief system is, you'll really enjoy AliveGBC.com. Well, I'm so glad that you've joined me today on Spiritual Perspective. And I pray your heart has been blessed, challenged, and encouraged as we've opened the pages of God's Word. And I pray your life has been strengthened. I pray your week is going to go fantastically well. And I just pray the mighty blessings of God upon you and your family. And please come see us in the church where the shout has not gone out, Gethsemane Baptist Church. God bless you. We're praying for you. Keep looking to Jesus.